Hi, my name is David Amano Salvas Jono, and I am the co-founder and CEO of Aramirbo. And today, I'm going to talk about the use of computational tools to study the aerodynamic behavior of tractor trailers. This work was performed in collaboration with Josh Dawson from Pointwise, Eduardo Molina from Stanford University, and Travis Kerrigan from Pointwise. In the U.S., over 70% of freight tonnage is moved by tractor trailers. Driving in the vast network of highways that we have, going from one side of the country to the other. Through this process, these vehicles tend to stay the majority of the time at highway speeds. And when moving at that speed, over 65% of the fuel that they use goes towards overcoming aerodynamic drag. It's important to understand where is this aerodynamic drag coming from. And computational tools are a very good approach to try to figure this out. As you know, a truck is not a simple body. It has mirrors, wheels, antennas, uh, different gaps, uh, different curves, and all those contribute to drag and to the aerodynamic behavior of the vehicle. But in order to better understand where are these sources of drag coming from, uh, the scientific community have come up with simplified models that allow us to start studying different parts of the vehicle and start figuring out what's the drag contribution of those places. Two of the most common ones are the ground transportation system model, um, which is a highly simplified version of a truck. It takes away the mirrors, it takes away the antennas. Um, it actually changed the entire front of the vehicle, the entire tractor into just a curved surface. It removes the gap um, and it creates that flat back. It's effectively an elongated bluff body, and it's a model that's very commonly used to study uh, the wake of the vehicle and what is the effect that this has on the overall drag of this vehicle. Um, as you might imagine, the wake is not the only source of drag, and to be able to study other places of the vehicle that contribute towards our dynamic drag, the GCM, the Generic Conventional Model, was developed. This, ve this new model brings a lot of the features of a tractor trailer. It actually has a uh, tractor shape. Um, it has the wheels. It introduces the gap in between the tractor and the trailer. Um, and it even has a small wheel train for the back wheels of the trailer. In this way, being able to bring our computational model closer to reality. At our immutable, we wanted to see a couple more features that we believe are important to the aerodynamics of these vehicles. Um, and therefore, we created our own version of the generic conventional model, the immutable GCM. Um, in this vehicle, we increase the size, the width of the tractor to match the size of tractors that are commonly being used uh, to transport goods around the country. We introduce the trailer stand that is um, used for trailers to sit in a place without the tractor being connected. And since they can't completely fold away, they influence the aerodynamics of this vehicle when they are being pulled in on the road. Uh, we introduce the I-beam in the very back of the trailer um, and in addition to that, we changed the length of the trailer to 53 feet, uh, which is one of the most common lengths for trailers that are commonly used here in the U.S. With this model, uh, we turned this to our collaborators at Pointwise, um, where they started meshing uh, this geometry in order for us to be able to simulate it. Um, for representing the surface of this vehicle, uh, the technique that was used was an advancing front um, and using exclusively triangles. There is no anisotropic stretching on the surface of the mesh, and this was done to help achieve a high quality boundary layer when this is extruded from the surface of the mesh. In order to guarantee uh, quality, the maximum included angle was monitored and the maximum that was reached in this particular mesh was 131.5 degrees 
Uh, same thing with the area ratio. The maximum that was reached was 8.9, and the aspect ratio of each one of those triangles, the maximum was 6.9. In that way, guaranteeing that the health of the mesh on the surface uh, will translate to the health of the mesh on the volume that we are going to be using to compute the flow. To uh, be able to model the surface of this vehicle, 650,000 triangular elements were used. The pinch points, such as the one created by the wheel when it hits the road, um, were removed in this way by introducing a little fillet. This modification allows T-Rex, which is the tool uh, within point ways to extrude those boundary layer elements, to be able to create high quality boundary layer elements um, since it prevents premature local termination. Uh, These minor modifications were put in place just to improve the mesh quality and be able to solve the problem uh, faster and with less uh, complications. When using T-Rex to create this boundary layer, um, we were careful to use um, just triangular elements in the mesh that represented the truck itself. In that way, all the elements that were created in the boundary layer were um, prismatic elements that were created directly by extruding this uh, triangles from the actual mesh in, in the tractor. To be able to capture the wake, um, a tool which is a box shape uh, parametric source was used. And this extended uh, a full truck length after the truck in order to capture all the different vorticities that were going to be formed in the wake of the vehicle. Um, and this particular tool uh, was quite helpful since it was able to uh, concentrate a higher amount of resolution in the areas where we need it without necessarily having to increase that resolution in places where we don't. Finally, um, we decided to use a um, approach that allowed us to create a far field, a middle field, and then a near field block. And the idea was that the only thing that will need to be changed if any design modifications or if any shape modifications are done to the vehicle will be the near field. In that way, being able to save time and save energy from um, having to modify the entire mesh. This near field block um, is really where all the design will happen and it allows us to really focus the um, high density points um, in areas where resolution is required. And then have a meat field block that um, takes that high resolution and quickly expands it to a, to a lower resolution area that can be found in the far field. In that way, saving computational time by not focusing on resolution areas that don't require that much attention. And then uh, in the far field, we decided to use a structure block in order to minimize the amount of cells that were required in that area while um, having uh, the flow align with hexahedral elements that are growing all the way from the midfield all the way to the far field. To simulate this flow with the mesh that I just described, uh, we used uh, SU2 uh, version 6.0.3. For modeling the turbulence in this flow, we decided to use the Tatch Eddy simulations based on SSD turbulence model. To discretize the invested fluxes, uh, we use a high resolution simple load dissipation um, AUSM. And for uh, walking through time, we use a dual time stepping uh, with uh, delta time or a time step of 1 e to negative 3 seconds. The total simulation was 29 convective times uh, at a computational cost of 125,000 CPU hours using a mesh that had uh, 23 million points, which roughly translates to about 88 million elements. 
In order to know if our simulation was uh, close to reality, we decided to compare it with both experimental and computational uh, studies that have been done in the past in a similar shape. Um, the first one was an experimental study by Storms in 2006 using a 1 8 scale model. And the second one, a computational study by Pointer using, again, the same 1 8 uh, model. One of the things that we had to do in order to be able to compare the values with the one that we um, were obtaining through our simulation was to correct the area uh, for the coefficient of drag. And the area that we use for all three studies is really the area of the back of the trailer. And by making this correction on the two other studies, we're able to compare apples to apples with the results that we're having. Furthermore, uh, when looking at the Reynolds number in these two studies compared to ours, you can see that the study uh, performed by Storms in 2006 and Pointer in 2009, they both are around 1 million uh, Reynolds number as a function of the width of the vehicle, while our study is around 5 million since we're using a full-scale model. Um, and thanks to the work performed by Storms in 2004 and by Woods, in 2015, uh, we know that for heavy vehicles, the Reynolds number um, has a high influence when it's below 1 million. After this Reynolds number hits 1 million, the coefficient of drag is effectively Reynolds invariant. And from 1 million on when it goes higher, um, the coefficient of drag remains steady and therefore uh, we can compare them to the, the results that were performed in the past. By comparing uh, our result with, uh, particularly with the result shown by storms, which is an experimental result, we can see that our coefficient of drag is about 9.4% higher than what he showed, um, which makes sense since we're not using the standard GCM model, we're actually using a modified GCM model that like I mentioned before, it actually has a wider tractor. It has a longer trailer. We introduce uh, the fifth wheel, which is the connection, uh, the link between the tractor and the trailer. We introduce the trailer stand, which influences the flow. And then we introduce the I-beam in the back that again, that influences the flow in the back of the truck, which is one of the areas that produces a high amount of drag in this ground vehicle. So looking at the results, starting from the pressure, um, you can see that it performs as expected. It has a big stagnation point in the very front. And as the flow turns different corners, uh, the pressure drops as the, as the flow speeds up to be able to uh, take those turns. And then when you look at the rear view of the truck can be seen that's a highly um, low pressure region in the back of the truck, and that's where the wake seats. So this is all consistent with, with what we could expect from the flow past semi-truck. Having a closer view, uh, starting from the side view, uh, you can see in the pressure distribution on the left and the streamlines to visualize the flow on the right, that the flow hits the stagnation point in the very front. It speeds up through the curved surfaces. Uh, when it, when you focus on the gap in between the tractor and the trailer, it can be seen that it forms vortices and these vortices um, create very interesting uh, pressure distributions in that tractor trailer gap uh, where uh, there's a low pressure region uh, with standing vortices that then uh, influence what's happening near the, the gap region in both the tractor and the trailer as the flow continues to move downstream towards the tail. Um, it can be seen how it uh, speeds up and uh, since it doesn't have any skirts on the side to prevent the flow from uh, going from the bottom of the trailer um, outside, 
it actually pushes some of that flow outside, which can be seen in the pressure distribution, both in the side view and the bottom view. Um, and then as it hits the back of the vehicle, it separates completely in the sharp corner that's formed by the trailer and creates this uh, highly turbulent um, region, which is the wake. And that high turbulence is what's responsible for that pressure uh, in the back of the vehicle, which is low and is one of the contributors to drag in this type of, this type of vehicle. To be able to really see uh, what's happening, it's sometimes good to see the velocity contours. And again, looking at the side view, um, the gap between the tractor and the trailer uh, shows the really low pressure that's characteristic of having vertical structures, um, and then the low velocity in there. And then um, again, the back of the vehicle where, where the flow separates and that turbulent wake forms, um, it's clear that it has a lower velocity. Uh, one very interesting phenomenon that can be seen here is really the effect of both the trailer stand, um, where flow tends to create um, as lower moving areas around the trailer stand. And then looking at the I-beam at the very back of the vehicle, can be seen that it actually affects the flow in the wake. Um, and that is one of the reasons that we reintroduced that I-beam to be able to study the flow um, past this heavy vehicle, because we wanted to know what's the influence that that has on the wake in addition to uh, just the shape of the trailer that has those sharp vortices that cause a flow to separate and create this um, low pressure region. Through this process, um, we've confirmed that the combination of PointWise and SU2 creates a very powerful tool to study the aerodynamics of ground vehicle, um, and particularly the aerodynamics of tractor trailers. The meshing strategy um, accomplished a few objectives. First, uh, the resolution uh, was concentrated around the near body region, allowing us to really put um, high resolution areas where we were interested in knowing what the flow was going to be doing and that allowed us to really get that resolution to capture the effects that we were after. The block topology allows for quickly trading between designs um, and in that way we're able to just change a small part of the mesh while keeping both the meal field and the far field uh, constant. And third is that the large majority of this flow, uh, we were able to um, fill it with flow aligned hexahedral elements, in that way making the whole process a lot easier and faster. And finally, um, we have shown that we can successfully capture the flow characteristics of a tractor trailer and the integrated forces. Um, using this uh, simulation um, framework. And we're confident that we can continue to work that, to use this to work towards improving their dynamic behavior of heavy vehicles. Uh, we would like to thank uh, the Extreme Science and Engineering Discovery Environment, EXCEED, which is funded by the National Science Foundation for the computational resources that were required to make this work possible. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Again, my name is David Amanosalvas Jono, and if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I can be reached at david at um, which is in this slide. Thank you.